Hi guys, today we're going to talk about watercolour brushes. So I generally show you on the channel that my two favourite brushes, the Escoda Reserva and the Da Vinci Mop brush. So these are all natural hair brushes as well. So, but I, I wanted to, I, I wasn't sure whether to do this video or not because a lot of these brushes I've collected over maybe the last three to five years. And I just don't use them a lot, so I don't necessarily want to show them on the channel. But uh, I have gotten a couple of new ones, and they will be entering the, the my lineup. So I wanted to show you my top five. And I thought I would just um, sort of show you these brushes, just in case you might like one, or you know it might be useful for you. And also so you can see how... Um, how many brushes I've gone through to find the right ones and I'll keep you know looking for I want to show you the best sort of quality that you can get so you know if you're looking to uh, get a paintbrush I still recommend the Escoda Reserva and the Da Vinci Mop brush uh, but let's just go through some of these new ones and have a little look Okay, so here is kind of my little haul that I got from Jackson. So I did get a, a dip hole, uh, like another dip pen, a nib holder and a um, the nib just to kind of see if there's something out there that's comparable or, you know, an alternative to the gold ones that I always uh, tell you about from Jet Pens that they came in back in stock and they went out within about 48 hours. So, um I think you guys are to thank for that and I I actually I'm thinking about even next year maybe getting these in my Etsy shop so that uh, it's easier for you to get them all the time because they're really there's really nothing comparable so the one that I just got to try you could see that the uh, nibs there were different and it's just it's just a completely different experience so I also got this Caran d'Ache uh, graph wood and I really love it. It's pretty aesthetic, but it's not necessarily, it feels a little bit scratchy to write with. So I still love my, um, the Faber-Castell graphite aquarelle that I show you all the time, but I just really like this one as well. So it's got a nice weight to it. So you can see here my two favorite brushes that I talk all, about all the time, the Escoda Reserve number no. six and the Da Vinci uh, Petit Gris Pour Mop. Uh, double zero so I really really love both of these brushes now you can go up or down in size but a lot of you have told me when you've gotten the uh, Da Vinci that it's like a little wand a little magic wand and um, you've been really impressed with it so I just got another comment about that and of uh, quite a few of you have described it like that so I'm really glad that you're enjoying that uh, sometimes I just worry that the handles a bit too light so it's that's my only complaint but I really really love the brush and I suppose they just put out for the price whatever they can so um, you know I'd love an extra weighted handle but I tried this Isabay one it's double the price and um, yeah I'm just I've just had problems it lost hair straight away water's flicking out from the sort of plastic ferrule and it's just really been not not a great experience so the da vinci still my number one and then here you can see this is a little da vinci travel brush so this is not the squirrel mop this is a sable hair travel brush and i this is the number five so i i love this brush when we get to the um trying it portion so i hadn't actually tried it here i was just showing you in comparison to the number six so it's a little bit smaller than the escoda reserva and it's such a cute petite little size so it's really good for you know popping in a travel kit or um, popping in your handbag or something like that but it's so lovely it looks like a little mascara did I say that and so this will be coming with me on a few of the adventures that I have planned that hopefully I can get to do for the channel in you know over Christmas so the next thing is a liner so I got this this is da Vinci as well and um, this is a sable hair liner. So let me see here. 
it's the maestro so this is in a number two so again the sizing starts from number one and goes upward one is the smallest and like 10 is the largest or you know it goes on from that but um you can see here all i had for a liner was like the um one from just a pack from walmart so i thought i should uh, upgrade it and i love this brush and then uh here we have what, what have we got here okay so here i'm showing you a few different options for like a sword liner or a angular brush so when i started i actually i had this princeton quarter angular and you can see there that i only used it for about six months and it's pretty much had it as a brush the bristles are all splaying and it doesn't you know it just it's not a great experience uh, the plastic ones will wear out quicker and things like that so the you know and it was still a fairly expensive brush considering so then i had this jackson's one which i the jackson's dagger which i really really loved as well except that i just i don't like the handle so i just never i just won't use it because i don't like holding the handle i really wish they'd do like a wood um, and I'm just showed you there the Grumbucker one with the orange uh, handle. That was only a three dollar brush, and it's got such a beautiful handle, and it's a really lovely brush. So anyway, I got the dagger brush I think four years ago or so after I was watching Liz Steele use the uh, uh, angular brushes all the time, um, and I was look and I thought it was time to kind of look for a replacement for that so i got a couple uh to try so i got this mac one uh it is what is it it's the zero norris trickster and it's a beautiful brush i really love their products uh really really nice brush it's not exactly it's a little bit soft for me to use but you know i'm happy that i have it uh the quality of it is lovely and then but this little gorgeous little brush it's this tiny little brush um, it's the Mac one and this is in the zero size zero so you can see how um, cute and petite these two brushes are together so I really love these we'll go through and do a little swatching sample with them as well so you can see them in action And so I will show you this other Mac one that I've had for a while. It is a, it's a seven eighths of an inch something. It's like a travel brush and it's a little bit too soft for me, but the quality, I knew the quality was really nice. Um, so I thought that the other Mac products would be really good and they really are a nice product. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, try swatching some of these out and see how they perform. Perform. So this was my first time uh, swatching all these new brushes. So I hadn't tried them prior to uh, swatching them here, and uh, I just kind of wanted to do it together. So uh, you know, just to see like how how it went. So the first thing we're swatching here is the Escoda Reserva. I use this all the time on the channel and this is a number six. And like I said, if you wanted something smaller, then you go to a lower number. If you wanted something larger, you can go to a higher number. The price will increase though, but um, this is a really nice brush. You don't use too much paint and it's just a nice one to start with. And then this one here is the Da Vinci. So really wasn't sure what to expect about this brush at all uh, and it blew me away it is so lovely to paint with and even the plastic so I wasn't sure about having the plastic um, barrel and it's kind of more like a matte satin finish it's really nice like it's a really high quality brush and I think I'm gonna try a couple more of their travel brushes and I am probably going to get my sister one of those as well, maybe my mum as well. So the next thing here we have is the, so this is the Da Vinci Maestro uh, liner brush. So this is really good for doing like veins in petals and I used to use the other one like all the time. I really loved using it and it was just, you know, um, one from Walmart. So 
again like I always say just start with whatever is available to you um, so this is a size 2 again you can go down in size and get a smaller one or up in size and get a larger one and I think I will get a couple more of these uh, for different things I, I actually really want the number 10 but it's out of stock at the minute so uh, you can see there that you can make a really super fine line with it or you can lay it on its side and uh, sort of make really uh, sweeping strokes and really wide strokes so I am just uh, writing I'm trying to kind of write with it here uh, I have sort of calligraphy on the brain at the minute but yeah you will definitely be seeing more of this brush this is in my top five and I will probably be adding a number 10 uh, to the collection you know when I can as well so happy to find this brush so I used to really love the liners and I just I've never been sure which way to go I think I did get another one to try it and I didn't like it so I think that got passed on uh, but yeah this is so beautiful and then I think this is the um, the regular one I started with as well so you can see that it still again comes to a point and then you you know but it just disperses the pigment differently so this is what are we trying now the mac norris okay so this is the jackson's dagger so i wanted you to see this because it's a really beautiful brush if you can stand holding the jackson's um you know the handles it's a really really nice one so i really like the way they've um designed this brush i just really wish that the, I just for some reason I just can't hold it I don't know if it's because I've had eczema but I just I just can't hold it so um, but it's it's such a beautiful brush the way the you know the length of it and everything like that you can see you can get a variety of different sweeps and different strokes these, these are really good for painting leaves in florals and just florals themselves at some point we'll we'll even try painting water and I think this would be a good one for water as well. So the next one we're going to try is this Mac Norris Trickster in the Zero. So again, this is a super beautiful brush. Uh, it's really aesthetic. It's it's really, really lovely brush. But uh, when I painted with it, it's a little bit too soft for you know just everyday use for me like I'm not exactly sure yet what I can use it for but I'm really happy to have it the quality is beautiful so you can see that you can get such a fine tip and then it will you can get you know a really nice long wide uh, stripe as well and I think that they use these for covering a lot of area you can use it for striping um, but again so I I'm not unhappy with this brush I really love it but it's just not gonna be in my top five and let me show you the Jackson's one with you know next to this one so you can see like how much longer and how they perform side by side So all of these brushes, it lo it's like a mermaid's tail when you're rinsing it out in the cup. Um, so what have we got next here? So we're trying out this tiny Mac 1 uh, and you'll see here that it's slightly firmer. I'm not sure if it's because it's a little bit shorter and it's got a bit maybe less uh, bristles in it. But it's, um, I really like it. I think it's it's really nice for expressive strokes they call it a liner so you can continue to fill up a lot of um, you know it holds a lot of pigment a lot of water and it can go 
go the distance as far as like you know filling up a long you know um, whatever amount if you need a, a lot of pigment uh, laid down or if you need um, you know to fill an area or do a big wash this will do the job so but it's also just really uh, you can see like it, it can create a number of different strokes and these again these sweeping strokes which are so pretty um, and then you can get the really fine point with it as well so we will this is in my top five as well and I will continue to kind of use this on the channel I might try and get like a, um, a pencil extender and see if this will fit in there so maybe that'll help to make it a little bit longer but it's it's not unpleasant to use it's just a different experience and um, yeah so you can see here that out of the new brushes these three made the cut for the top um, positions and I'll be you know using them more in on the channel and I really enjoy using them in artworks and you can see how many brushes that I've had to go through to find and to check and you know choose these brushes and that's why I like to um, be able to you know do that and look through uh, a different variety of things so that I can give you the best I, I don't want to kind of be um, you know I, I just feel like sometimes on especially on YouTube it's like um, you know yeah I got this and, and I'm using it but then like next week they're not using because they don't love it I want to be able to show you things that I'm going to keep using all the time in my art and I know that these five will be there all the time uh, and so this is the I was just trying out this other Mac one you can see that it's very soft and so it just didn't I, I'm not really sure how to use it or what I would use it for still so I, I I do like the quality but again I'm just not using it and so you can see here as well my method for uh, testing and swatching the brushes is not very scientific uh, I'm not doing it over several different papers and all these kind of different things. I'm just uh, feeling how the, you know, how it feels when I'm laying it down on the paper um, and what kind of strokes that I can get with it. So at this point, I know that the, um, you know, I know that what it should feel like and I know if it's, um, if it's giving me that kind of, quality on the paper or not and then I'm just looking at um, what you know what how I think I could use it okay so you can see my top five there and I've also added the da Vinci ethograph so obviously da Vinci is a brand that I'm gravitating towards a lot uh, I know that some of you have enjoyed the ethograph and it's kind of two tools in one so you get the nice the really nice mop head and then you get the uh, ethograph for metal point so you can draw with it it's basically the same as a lead pencil like a HB pencil it's very very light um, and but you is this um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But here you can see I'm just using a very uh, fine brush. This is a miniature brush. So we just got them a pack of them off Amazon. So it's nothing. It was like $10 for a whole packet of them. But it works quite well. Um, and often I just do need a brush for small details. So I used to have an Escoda Reserva number no. 2. Um, but this one has been working quite well uh, for the meantime. And then this is the ethograph. So you can see here it's not laying down very well on the watercolor paper, but it's just a really soft, uh, like a HB pencil. And you can keep building it up. But the good thing about the ethograph rather than metal point is you don't have to have, or silver point, you don't have to lay down a ground. So I'm still looking into both of them and we'll do kind of more, um, you know, videos with uh, both you know the ethograph and the silver point in you know coming up okay so I just realized I have never painted with the da Vinci the mop sort of part of the ethograph so you can see there when I was getting the um, stuff off the brush uh, I was using the side of the brush 
So they put a coating on it. I think it's just gum Arabic, but I was using the side of the brush to get it off. I don't ever go to the bottom of the, what am I talking about? The bottom of the water cup. I, I only ever use the side of the water cup if I want to brush my, um, you know, like wring my brush out or anything like that. If I'm um, getting pigment off, I just use the side of the cup. I never disturb the sediment on the bottom of the cup. I think that's really important and it also helps to not um, squash the fibers of your brush as well. You don't want to hurt the fibers of your brush. But you can see here when I was um, dipping it in, this is why I like smaller brushes. The lilac in my pan went all the way across so, you know, it's, it's going to use a lot of paint and it's going to become really messy as well, which I just... Um, you know, at some stage I might like to uh, paint bigger, but I'm quite happy painting with the smaller brushes at the minute. And you can see how fine the tip of that uh, large brush goes though as well. And I was um, comparing it to the liner, which you can see has a really nice fine line. Um, so it's pretty incredible that a brush that big can do such a nice fine line for you. And then here is the Princeton Neptune. So this one I got at Michael's. I think this was my first sort of splurge on a watercolor brush. I probably got it six or seven years ago. It was in the sale uh, portion. And so I just thought I would grab it. I use it for those watercolor ledges. So when I'm making and there's a tutorial about that over on Heirloom Lux. But when I'm making the old aged paper, I really like using this brush. Um, it doesn't feel again like so um what am i doing here so i'm just kind of laying down the color here and trying the brush out um again like i'm really happy with the lay down the the princeton neptune i've always i, I don't know plastic brushes they wear out very quickly so you can see like my escoda reserva and the da vinci i've had those for maybe four years maybe more and um, the Da Vinci is starting to get to the point where it needs to be replaced because I've been painting with it every day. So you can kind of feel that the um, it starts to wear down a little bit. Um, but, you know, I have absolutely, you know, used and used it to get it to that point. Whereas some of these other brushes are wearing out in a few months and really they haven't had much use at all. So you'd have to replace your brushes more often. And I'm also showing you here the, um, so this is, I, I didn't really get enough pigment in the brush, but you can see like how long you can paint with it for and how um, it's very even. So the lay down is gonna give you a really nice even lay down versus I show you with the uh, Neptune here and there's a, a really high offload of pigment and then the water runs out very quickly and so does the pigment. So you're gonna get a really uneven uh, lay down, like a really uneven wash. Okay, so I think that's about everything for the brushes. I got two other brushes, so we will talk a little bit about them, but I'll show them in a whole nother video. So this first one is a hake brush. It's a three inch brush. And when you have a, like a gradient wash, you can um, put that over it to soften it. And this other little one, you can um, texturize the paint. So they're kind of for two different things. One's to soften the wash and one's to texturize it. So. Uh, the Hake has softer bristles and the Mottler has a coarser bristle. Um, and the, this one here I also think could be nice for like um, getting pencil, you know, if you're doing a pencil drawing and you can just brush those off the, uh, you know, uh, drawing. But I haven't tried that for that yet. But um, So here you can see this is my little cup for my brushes. And I also have a few other things in here, like some knitting needles, um, some crochet hooks. Uh... Um, but yeah, I just kind of show you a few of the things that are in here. 
So I have an acrylic brush that actually came in a set for the um, graphite aquarelles, the watercolour lead pencils. And I found that pretty useful a few times. And then you can see some uh, rosewood crochet hooks, which I really love. And this is the little metal one that I'm always talking about that I use to mix the paint. So I can just mix it with that and then wipe it clean. So it's pretty easy instead of like a toothpick or something that might also take some of the paint. This one really doesn't. Um, so I think that's about everything. I hope this was kind of useful as far as if you are looking, you know, what kind of brushes, like you can see it's taken me, um, quite a few brushes to kind of figure out, uh, what I would need just for regular painting. And then a few of these other specialty ones, uh, from today that can help with, um, extra little touches in the painting. So it's like a little piano, um, I feel like, but um, that is pretty much everything. Oh, thank you as well so much for the lovely comments on the giveaway. And I will be trying to respond to all of those today. And um, if you haven't joined in the giveaway, you can go to the last video. It ends next Saturday. Um, I hope you're all having a good weekend. And I will see you uh, pretty soon. I have a few ideas of um, just hearing your comments have given me a few ideas of sort of going back to basics in some things and then sort of advancing in something. So we'll keep switching back and forth and hopefully you enjoy that. Um, also, if you sign up for the notification bell, then uh, YouTube will let you know. I try and do it on a schedule, but I can't always. So. Uh, YouTube will let you know when I post and yeah um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will if you have any questions about brushes let me know and I will see you soon bye